It is wonderful to see people live way beyond their lifetime because of the people who they love who succeed them, whether in the first or second generation, and even further than that. And this afternoon, we are privy to that with the story of the great Carlos P. Romolo, the very first Filipino who has won the Pulitzer Prize and also the very first Asian president of the United Nations. He lives way beyond his lifetime in the person of his granddaughter, Miss Sandy Romulo, who did a tribute by means of a restaurant to her grandfather. Let's watch this. Sandy Romolo Squilantini owns a unique restaurant which tells us about her grandfather. So why shouldn't she be proud if she is the granddaughter of Carlos P. Romolo's third son? Carlos Peña Romolo was a Filipino diplomat, statesman, soldier, journalist, and author. He was a co-founder of the Boy Scouts of the Philippines, the first Asian President of the United Nations General Assembly, named one of the Philippines' national artists in literature, and was the recipient of many other honors and honorary degrees, including the Pulitzer Prize Award. Growing up with him was wonderful. We lived all together mm -hmm. in our family compound, which he called Kasiyahan. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, was very, he was very strict about time. Mm -hmm. We had to be at the dinner table exactly at 7 o'clock every night. And we had to be properly dressed. Not, I mean, no, no camiseta, no chinela. Properly dressed to greet him, talk to him about what we did for the day. And he would always be interested in our activities. So that's how we grew up, eating together in a family table with all my cousins and uncles and aunts. He was a very heavy influence, and what really he inculcated in us was humility. Because he said no matter like how big he was in the government, we could never abuse our power. Mm -hmm. We would, like, he'd never, you know, allow us to go around with bodyguards or, or push our weight around, not line up, things like that. I mean, it was always like, because who I am, you have to... Be humble, you have to line up, you know, don't expect special treatment from anybody and things like that. So we grew up in that kind of a background. Would you say that Parabang, of course, now, now that you guys are all grown up, did, did his influence also rub off on you in your own family? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. So I always uh, tell my children the same thing, mm -hmm. like one thing he also, because of who he was and what he did, like he would always stop whatever career he uh, chose. So when my children, you know, in school, I always tell them, you know, I expect you to do your best in school, you know, things like that. Uh, always be on time. That's, that was <laughs> you made one, it yeah, uh -huh. you know, because that was one thing that he was very strict about, time. If, if he said the dinner is at 7, 10 to 7, you, you better be already going there. Another thing he was very strict about was dress code. If you were in a party and he said black tie, the women should be properly dressed in long gown and you should be, as a man, properly dressed in black tie. And there was one story that he, um, one of the ambassadors came in a coat and tie. And he came up to the reception right to greet my grandfather and he said, Oh, it's a good thing that you're 15 minutes early. You still have time to go home and change to a proper attire. He had way with words. He was good at diplomacy that he uh -huh. could say these things without really being offensive. Being offensive, uh -huh. like a joke. Uh -huh. He would make it like a joke, but. He meant it, you know. Was it hard to grow up in a setting yung parabang where uh, the standards were set so high? The wonderful thing about him was he didn't expect that of us. Mm -hmm. He would look at us and the different talents we had, so he wouldn't be pressured to say, oh, 
you have to be your you're a Romulo, you have to be honors. Mm. You know? He would never impose that on us. Mm -hmm. It was always whatever you're happy with, you do it. Like when let's say he's abroad. That's another thing that was very endearing about him. When we when he was abroad, which was often, he would like us to write letters to him. Oh. So each grandchild would write a letter about what we were doing, and he would in turn write us back. Person, each grandchild really? get, got their own letter. And in the letter, he would put things like, how's your basketball game? Did you win? Oh, I like your drawing. You're like your grandmother. You draw so well. Things like that. So he was very personal. Yes. There, everything was about a personal touch. Yes. How was Sam? Parang kasi, syempre, he only had four, four sons. Uh -huh. no? wala, siyang, wala siyang daughter. How was his relationship with your uncles and your father? Yung... Well, he was very doting, of course, with, with my dad and his brothers. And actually, there was a time during the war that they were separated for some time. And... There's a story when he came back, when they saw each other again, my younger, my youngest uncle said, who are you? He didn't remember his father because he was so young when they left, when they were separated, because he went with MacArthur abroad. Right. Uh -huh. And his family was hiding because they were wanted by the Japanese. Right. So they were hiding all around Pagsanghan, where my grandmother was from. So after years of separation, they saw each other again, and my uncle couldn't e didn't even remember him. On the romantic side, how was he with your Lola? He was very romantic. He loved to write letters. Mm -hmm. So he and he writes so beautifully. So he would write nice romantic letters to my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And when he was courting her, she lived all the way in Pagsanghan. So. Mm -hmm. So, it he was would, far. so he would have to go visit just for a few minutes because you know how strict it was during those yes, times. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so he would go for a few minutes just to see her and then come back. Okay. You know, and they actually met because he was her escort during the car. She was a carnival queen. Oh, I see. And I my see. grandfather was an editor at the time, and um, the newspaper asked him to be her escort. escort. Before that, I would always tell them stories about my grandfather and say, oh, you know, he did this and did that. And they would say, oh, you're bragging again, mom. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, I, you know, he really was a great man, you know, and they never realized it until we opened this restaurant and mm. they looked at the pictures and they said, wow. It's like a living album yeah. at this restaurant. He was, you're right, mom. Sandy was married to Enzo Squillantini. They have three children named Claudia, Rafa, and Chiara. At first, their children had no idea of what an amazing person their great-grandfather was. Until she and her husband put up their first Romulo Cafe. Before that, I would always tell them stories about my grandfather and say, oh, you know, he did this and did that. And they would say, oh, you're bragging again, mom. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, I, you know, he really was a great man, you know. And they never realized it until we opened this restaurant. And they looked at the pictures and they said, wow. It's like a living album yeah. at this restaurant. He was, you're right, mom, you know. Mm. Then they went to Corridor and they saw, you know, his statue there and, and things like that. And they realized, wow. In your own personal uh, family, ngayon, like um, as an adult and getting married with your own children, uh, parabang, and of course with with uh, with the restaurant now, which is a tribute to your uh, grandfather and, and not only to your grandfather but to the whole family, diba? through the generations. How did you start with, uh, or or what made you guys decide? Was it uh, the children or the grandchildren already? Actually, it was my husband. My husband is. Okay. in F&B uh -huh. and he said I want to open a restaurant to pay homage to your grandfather mm -hmm. because he realized you know through we were we've been in the food business for a long time and he realized the waiters they didn't know who he was he said do you know who Carlos Piromano is and they were he was they were like no so he said you know I think it's time we bring back that you know so that the younger generation will well, know yes. who he is when we started Romano Cafe which was in Quezon City first I showed my partner, Ivy Almario, 
the pictures of our old house, and our old house had black and white floors. Mm -hmm. We had Spanish grills and hanging lamps, and that was her inspiration. So mm -hmm. if you look at our yes. floors, are, it's black and white. And then downstairs, if you'll, you'll see the, um, the design on the wall, is like uh, grills. Yes. Those are the grills that we had in our house. What we wanted to do was um, simulate like you're coming into the Romulo house, you're going to be entertained um, there. That's why, you know, you enter, there's a sofa. So you yeah. sit down in the sala first before you're seated to your table. Mm. And then the food we serve are the food that my grandmother used to prepare. Wow. Okay. So that's what the feel we want our guests to feel in Romulo Cafe, like you're coming to our home. If there's one particular thing that you would want your, your family to be remembered uh, for, for example, or what, what sets your family apart, um, what would it be? I think it's love for this country mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and pride to be Filipino. After sharing uh, the story of your family, your uncles and your father, and of course, since your father is a very selfless uh, servant of the country, in our closing, um, is there anything that um, you would like to impart to our televiewers, to the Filipino people, especially to inspire them at, um, at a time like this? All I can say is that I would really like this country and the Filipino people to strive to be world class mm -hmm. in everything we do in the airports, the roads, the traffic, the discipline. Yes. Um, I think we should strive to, to do that in this country and to be proud of who we are. So there you have it. This afternoon, we have been witness to the lives of great people who have lived way beyond our lifetimes in the person of, of course, Senator Francisco Soc Rodrigo and the great Carlos P. Romulo through their children and grandchildren. So sometimes it is through their descendants that we learn more about their life. This is something that I want to do for a few other people, but then let that be a surprise. So wait for us and watch us again next week as we bring you the lives of the people we believe you should know right here on Spotlight.